obviously the facial animation when they're talking. Is that something that fans can do with the cinematic tools in the level editor or no? Depends on the feature. The rain pouring down the surfaces was something that killed us for a very long time. We actually had to do all that manually. Um, so give, the tool set won't let you do that. Some of the other stuff we did, the rain particles falling through the sky, you can totally do that. Was there any other specific features that you wanted to, that you were interested in? Yes. <laughs> um, the voices and stuff. I mean, obviously, anyone could record their own voice and do the acting, but what about the lip syncing? Is that something you can actually take the faces of the characters and animate it in that detail? I, I don't think so. I, I'm not positive, though. I don't think you can quite do that. We use face effects is probably not included in all that the package, but um, if you were to get face effects on your own, you may be able to do that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So when it came to uh, Warcraft Three, you guys used a lot of schematics instead of in-game uh, renders, and you used a lot of you know pre-rendered movies. I'm kind of wondering, you know, why. At that point, that was really the last game that you chose to go that way only and started to go more in-game movies, kind of like back what you were saying with a few questions before where, um, you know, you can only make the movies so detailed because every computer has to be able to play them at different settings and you can only do so much stuff. With that hurdle, why is it still that you chose to go this route versus all pre-rendered, you know, the best looking you can make movies and in-game schematics? Well, up until StarCraft II, all of the in-game storytelling was done by the game team. Uh, if there was a scene where within the game two characters started talking to each other and they needed to t develop the story arc, the game team would create that. But that takes the game team away from what they're best at, making the game. And we do have a department where all we do is make movies. So we figured it made sense to create a team that could create a large amount of content for these games. Now, on the pre-rendered side, the, those movies that look so amazing, they look so good because they take a really long time to make. And that means that the number of minutes we can produce is limited unless we wanted to grow the team to a really insane size. And we don't want to do that. We like the culture that we have and don't want to blow up the team so big that it changes. So the compromise that seemed to be, to be a win-win for everyone was having a dedicated team that just makes in-game cinematics. All right. That was good? my question. Thanks. Hey, uh, is there any plans to make a longer cinematic for the games, like 30 minutes plus? For StarCraft II? In general. We, we've talked about doing downloadable content. Uh, we've talked about doing episodic TV shows. We, we've talked a lot, I guess is the, the bottom line. Um, if we can ever get to the point where we can fully support the teams, as we need to, and also be developing additional content on the side, we would definitely be interested in doing it, but we're not there yet. All right. Thanks. What's going on? Uh, we just want to find out when the Overdrive t-shirt is coming out. <laughs> That's what we want. I think you've got an IP there that you need to tap into. <laughs> Thanks. Great. I just want to say great job with uh, uh, Cinemax and StarCraft 2. Thank you. My question is, there's uh, other ga RTS games out there that utilize live action Cinemax. Was there ever a point where you guys actually thought about doing that with live action or something close to it? Not for a second. Okay. It's because just, it's not something that we do at Blizzard and our opinion is that it doesn't result, it doesn't yield the results that we would like. Hey guys, so I've got probably an average machine. I start up the game, it's got the deal cinematic, it looks awesome. And then I go to Marsara and everything looks horrible, like the textures are really plain. So I was just wondering, have you ever thought about pre-rendering the in-game cinematics like you do for the pre-rendered, so people that don't have the top of the line machines don't take a big performance hit. We've actually been debating that pretty heavily since shipping StarCraft II. Uh, we're very proud of the fact 
that our StarCraft in-game cinematics run in real time, it was, it was a pretty major task to pull off. Um, but that said, it does kind of bother me that people who aren't running ultra high-end system aren't seeing all the detail that we put into it. So we're actually discussing it right now on whether to go to a captured out solution where we, we continue to make the movies in-game and then capture them out. Yeah. The trade-off, though, is that the interactive portions, where when you're clicking around on the screen, the story mode is still going to look at the lower quality setting. So you're going to see that quality setting when you're clicking around. And when we play an in-game movie, the quality will change. So let me ask you, would that bother you? What would your preference be? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, a trade-off. I, I, I mean, I, I think it would probably bother me. I mean, maybe the solution you have is best. It's just a, an open question that I've heard asked before that I wanted to give to you guys. Okay. We don't have a, a really good solution yet sure. for it, but we're looking. So, right. thank you. Thanks. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Okay. I, I got a question about the lighting of the scenes. Like, similar towards your animation, you would change the animation per shot. Are you changing the lighting per shot, or is it a general scene lighting? Yeah, no, we change the light for every shot. Every shot is pretty much rendered from scratch. We, in most cases, even change the direction of the sunlight just to get that look we want in every shot. So yeah, it's pretty much shot for shot. Very cool. Very cool. I, uh, I like that people are moving towards, looking towards the camera and lighting from that angle. It makes a huge difference. Awesome, thanks. Hi, um, I was just curious, I assume you storyboard the entire story before deciding to do an in-game cinematic or pre-rendered cinematic, and I was just curious, what, it, do you have criterion for what becomes pre-rendered and what becomes an in-game cinematic? Is there, are there scenes that are so epic in scope they have to be pre-rendered versus what becomes in-game? I think you actually just described it pretty well. Um, we make the decision on what is pre-rendered and what is in-game before we get to the storyboard stage when it's still just it's stories on paper. And at that point, we try to figure out the overall layout of where each movie is going to land in the game. We know that we want to open with the pre-rendered cinematic. We know that we want to finish with the pre-rendered cinematic. And then we try to figure out how much time do we have to create more pre-renders in the middle and make sure that we space them out well enough. Once we figure that out, we pick the most epic moments that we can find and make those the pre-rendered movies. Thanks. Okay, we have time for one more question. Hi, uh, you had mentioned before that you had to triple the amount of polys that you used for, uh, well, for the cinematics. I was wondering for well, either the cinematics or maybe a portfolio piece, uh, how many polys you're looking for for a good character? Well, for the character pieces, when we started, we were about 4,000 polys. And then the highest character we probably had is around 20,000. As for the sets, we went from about 10,000 to close to 150,000. So, I mean, when we look at portfolio pieces, I mean, if you're looking, if you're talking about in-game sort of stuff, uh, we are looking at the higher aid range, around the 20,000 mark polygon is probably what we were looking for, yeah. For a character? For a character, 20,000. For a character, yeah. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Did you get to answer any questions?